Hello, people. I'm Lee Call 3 I'm here with my partner, James Proctor, and we have our very special guest today, Tommy Stiggs. Tommy, how are you doing today? Hi, guys. How are you? Hello, everybody. Nice to be hey. here with you again, guys. Yes. Thank you. You know, we... We decided, you know, we were we were trying to think of somebody that has an association with uh, with Merlino, and we know that you do, Tommy. Yeah. And uh, we want to ask, we're going to ask you some uh, some your opinion of him being on here, okay. and what do you think of value he brings to you two. So by starting that off, I'm going to say, Tommy, how is everything going with your show? Oh, my show is pretty good, Lee. You know I keep it very general, but very good. I'm up to about 2,600 subs on a show about nothing. <laughs> well, at least you admit it. I have a good <laughs> That's time. Why, yeah, yeah we, I know you do. And you always look refreshed while you're on it. Uh, it's, uh, you come a long way with your background there and stuff. You know, every, you look much different than when you first started, you know. Sure. I guess we all do. Some improvements. Uh, yeah, those cash apps help, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What was your feelings when Merlino first came on here and when Joey Merlino first came on here? Well, I don't know if you guys remember this, but this is not new breaking news. I did discuss this with you guys about a year ago. Yes. I was going to actually do it with him. We were going to do a little bit of it. Uh, he was rushing into it at that time and we were coming up on football season. Wasn't 100% prepared. Going forward, I'm not the guy to do it with him. The kid snuff that's doing with him is fantastic. It, it wouldn't have been right for what he's looking to do, me and him. So he went that way, and it's working out beautifully. So as far as him uh, launching it, I think it's absolutely incredible. See, if you were going to do a show with Joey, I think it would have to be called Coffee with Tommy and yeah. Joey in the morning. No, who knows? Yeah, he <laughs> could, we couldn't have gone to the level he's at. I, I couldn't, that's, It's way above me, way above me, what they can do. I'm going to play you, this is how, I'm going to play you a, um, something real quick here. This is how he came on to introduce himself that he was coming on. And uh, this is a short that we made. It got thousands of views, like 10,000, I think. Oh, but anyway, okay. uh, we're going to put it up real quick. Crime family boss, Joey Merlino, issuing a warning to all the rats out there. This will be good. But also, I've been getting a lot of DMs now over this podcast. About what? Some people love it. There's a lot of haters out there. People that I never even heard of. People I don't even understand what they're saying. But a lot of people hate on this podcast. A, a, a lot of them are in the witness protection program. You know, I don't know what they're saying, what they're doing, but I'm not even going to answer them, right? We're not going to give no, them anything. No, I'm, fuck, no I'm going I'm to expose them. Don't worry about it. It's coming too on the podcast. It's coming? Yeah, I'm going to expose the Justice Department and all the rats. All the rats. Over my cases. As soon as I get all the paperwork, I'm coming for you. So be right, ready. Good. All the rats, you're getting exposed. Stay tuned. Let's I'm not give them too much. No, now. I'm going to show you what the government, how the government treats them. Yeah. Gives them, lets them they got a license to commit any crime they want. Do they get paid? Wow. So did you ever see that short? I did see it. That's incredible. I love it. I love it. And, and James, I like to ask James and Tommy, I like to ask you guys both this question. How funny did you think it was when they said, Oh, and uh, it, the informants are the ones that are complaining about him. I thought it was just, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to me, you know, that, you know, they're the ones complain about it. I'm not sure what they have to uh, complain about, but, you know, I, I like Snuffs and um, Joey's response to that. I really, I think that they, uh, they didn't expect it. I think it was the buzz around a little bit. I think they're totally caught off guard with him coming out like that. And I think it's wonderful. See, I was under the assumption he was just going to come in and do some sports. But it's going beyond that a little bit, which I think is nice. Because let's face it, the only, the only type of gangsters we have in here are former gangsters, are informants. Right. That's true. That's true. That's true. But the wonderful thing is... He's now clean of the life. He's off paper. He has no restrictions. He has nothing to hold him back. He has freedom right now, and he did it the right way. And he can, look, I'm going to show you something. Everybody has a discovery. Everybody in any case that has ever been indicted has a discovery. So he's going to go back to his discoveries, 
He's going to pull out everything and he's going to pick them apart one at a time. He was, he, he gets excited very quickly. He wants to go fast, right? Mm -hmm. He, I think he's going to do a rat a week or a rat a month because if, if snuff keeps him there talking, Joey will talk. He'll just run with the whole show. Mm -hmm. So I think snuff keeps it at a beautiful 20, 25 minutes and it keeps them hungry. And I think he's going to expose in a gentlemanly way. Let me say it like that. In a gentlemanly way. Just as his demeanor was on there, he's going to deliver the information about the rats. You're not going to see the hate in him. Now, that could change. You know what happens when you start talking. Things can happen. Yeah. I think he's going to just destroy them in a gentlemanly way. It's just my observation. Now, the... Now, these uh, informants that are talking about him, he has a little beef going on with uh, Dominic Ciccoli. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to badmouth Dominic Ciccoli, but they do have a beef going on. And uh, um, what, what I find funny about it, though, is not funny, but just thinking about it. Why do you think like a guy like Dominic Ciccoli, a serious guy in the streets, he, he's a killer. Joey's a killer. These guys back in the day, they were some serious guys. Okay. Why do you think two guys like that, that went two opposite ways, have this dislike for one another? James, you or me? Me? Yeah. James is frozen. <laughs> oh, James froze. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I froze, but I'm I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So go ahead and ask that again, Lee. Why do you think Chikali and uh, has such and and uh, uh, Joey? Joey. Joey are having this issue uh, right away. It, it, it came out. Yeah, I think it's what was brought up. I don't know if you agree, Tommy, but you remember that uh, Dom had talked about uh, Chris Paziello and talking about how, um, you know, he was, uh, you know, uh, a, a mob, a, not a mob guy, but like a, um, a strong person on the street, you know, someone you didn't want to mess with. And, right. and I think that's where, um, you know, Joey, took offense to that oh he dropped off yeah that's okay well he, he took offense off. to that he took offense okay. to it uh yeah, it's so in my observation of the whole situation you know he, he kind of said one side of a story dominic right said one side of a story right. and as you could see how calmly joey delivers his side of the story you can see the people that have testified in our rats the defense mechanism built into them right now, how they try to deliver some type of punch basically. And you could see right. how Joey just goes right through it and is ready to go toe to toe with anybody. You see the difference that, in demeanor, right? Oh, without a doubt. And, and you know, that's one thing I'm going to say. Okay. You have to understand that. I'm uh, this is another short that I want to play right. to give you an idea. Uh, what he has been up against in his in, in his life, basically. Joey's been through a lot, man. Joey's been through a lot. ...of the Philly crime family led by Joey Merlino, who opposed the Sicilian family boss, John Stanfa. A mob war erupted in 1992 that spilled blood on both sides, and eventually, Joey Merlino and the Young Turks became the winners with Merlino being elevated to boss in 1999. Other members of the Young Turks included Joey's right-hand man, Michael Chang, who was killed in a drive-by shooting in 1993. Stephen Mazone is known as a key enforcer and triggerman in many of the hits the Young Turks performed. Other prominent Young Turks included Gatano Scafidi, who became an informant in 2000, George Borghese, who later became a capo and consigliere for the family, and Martin Angelina, who eventually became the acting underboss. John Stanfa ended up getting sentenced to life in prison in 1996, while Joey Merlino is now doing a podcast on YouTube. Wow. Did you, did you see that one? We just made it today. That's great. Yes, that's Thanks. excellent. Great uh, work. Yeah, James is, James is becoming an expert at making those things. Right? Put, the time, <laughs> put the work in. Put the work in. It's yep. excellent content. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. So I want to... See, James, how many attempts were, were, were there on uh, Joey Merlino's life? Yeah, it's been documented at least two dozen attempts have been made on his life. 
And that includes uh, everything from bombings, you know, multiple attempts of bombings to he's actually what shot four times, uh, you know, or shot once four times, four bullets hit him and survived and multiple other attempts on his. Yeah. And Philip Coletti said that he tried to kill him several times with a bomb with bombs under the car, but the bombs wouldn't go off. So I guess uh, you could say the man has nine lives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it never went off. And so, you know, it's just, you know, he must not have been a good bomb maker for that, but still I mean, <laughs> the guy's got uh, nine lives. Exactly. I, I think he, he was, I, think I know of him being shot twice. If I'm not, I, I think twice, twice. Yeah, I well, he, got, he got hit with four bullets, but here's the funny thing, Tommy, it's not funny, but uh, Chingolini that was with him. At, okay, which brother was that that was with him, Jay? Michael. 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 Okay, Michael, Michael was with him. Michael got hit with one shot, and oh. it went into his heart. Heart, yeah. Uh, and here's here's Phil laying next to him. He gets shot four times. Yeah, Joey got shot four times, and then um, yeah, his friend that uh, and he knew Michael from you know from school from eighth grade, and yeah, gets shot you know, in the chest and dies immediately. 39 years and this, ago. Mm -hmm. and this 39 is, years this, ago now. Yeah. Did you, were you familiar with the brothers at all, Tommy? No, no. How did you become familiar with Joey? Well, in recent time through friends of mine that are dear friends of his, we have strong mutual friends. And uh, a year ago they made the introduction of us possibly doing what we were going to do a year ago. So in modern time, one of my best friends is actually dear, dear friends with him right now. And then back way back in 2001, three of my friends went to see him when he was first incarcerated. I think he was doing 14 years, possibly or 10, 10 or 14. I don't know. Uh, they went to see him. I believe it was in Texas first. So a couple of neighborhood guys that were dear friends of mine went to see him. Uh, they were just regular guys at that time. And things have changed over the years, obviously. Not going to mention names and everything, but so there was a connection there. There was always a connection there. Uh, it's age. It's age. You know, we're all within 10 years of each other. Right. So you have that age thing. Jersey guys and Philly guys are kind of the same as far as the neighborhood uh, connection. The growing up together. Jersey guys, most of the crews in Jersey all grew up together from childhood. Philly is the same way. So there's a good connection there as far as the culture, so to speak. The culture is the same. So they take the Jersey guys and Philly guys take to each other because they have the same type of culture. Now, I heard Sammy Gravano say the other day that he would love to have Joey on his show. <laughs> Never happened. Never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, he said uh, we would like to invite him down to the studio here. So do you think that Marino would ever associate with somebody as bad as Sammy Gravano? Not only will he not associate with somebody as bad as Sammy the Bull Gravano, he will not associate with people that have platformed guys like Sammy the Bull Gravano. You will not see him on any of those shows. You will not. That's from his mouth. Anybody that's platformed a rat can try their best. They're not getting him on their show. If and, you I know, stand another, corrected eventually, I'll have egg in my face, but that's from him. Mm. And, you know, him and John Stanford, they had a serious problem. There was a major war between the two of them. But you say what you want about John Stanford, but John Stanford every time went to prison and did his time and never ratted. Right. So you got to say that about the guy. Now, he's an old school Sicilian. He was part of the Cherry Hill Gambinos, and they placed him with Bruno. And uh, so, but see, Stanford was very disliked by everybody on the street. He kind of reminded me of Castellano. Uh, the same type of situation with Gotti and Castellano. The street guys liked Gotti, and Stanford was considered very arrogant, mean, and uh, feared, but not respected. Uh, James, is that pretty accurate? Would you say about Stanford? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Stanford was definitely, uh, you know, feared. He, he, I, he was not liked uh, by people. He also uh, didn't know how to deal with the 
the younger guys, you know, like, like Joey. And, you know, and there was uh, definitely a uh, friction, you know, there were uh, Joey and his, his crew, they were really um, doing a lot, you know, and, but they were uh, bumping heads against a lot of the old timers there in Philly. And so uh, they just didn't, they didn't get along. And, and he tried to even, um, he did things like brought in, uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph Chang, Joey Chang to be an underboss thinking maybe, you know, get the older brother in, maybe they could reel in, um, you know, the guys like Joey, but, Mm -hmm. but that didn't work. And then they even tried, they even made, um, Michael and, and Joey, and that didn't help either. It kind of backfired. Yes, me. (laughs) Joey, that crew was going to, is a freight train going to the top. No guy that's not from the neighborhood is not going to take it over. They're not going to let it happen. Same as John Gotti. Blue collar, street guy, so to speak. And the guys around Merlino were his friends from friends. childhood. Exactly. Yes. Same with a lot like Gotti. Exactly. Childhood friend that had this power base around them, and yeah. they knew they could trust each other. They were both yeah. going to be freight trains to the top. Different yes. areas, different times. And it was right. And it needed to be that way. I, in my opinion, needed to be yeah. that way. And and many of them were children, were kids of yeah. already made men of Philly. So, I mean, these were second generation gangsters. They weren't just people, um, you know, just off the boat or just someone that uh, had never uh, been part of that life. They had been part of that life from the time they were born because of their, of their fathers and uncles and cousins. I mean, there's, I mean, these guys were uh, were related to one another. And so, I mean, that's a – and the thing is, Stampho was really the odd person out. He was the one that wasn't really part of of the group there, and he was who, the outsider. Who who put Stampho in there? Was it New York that put Stampho there? Yeah. New York. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, they weren't they, having they it. Were. I don't care who put him there. That crew down there was not having it. It didn't matter who put them there you have to come down with all the five boroughs would have to come down there and they will take them on till the last guy goes down there's no doubt about it and they and they said you know the gambinos put them in in there i mean it was uh Mm -hmm. i believe it was john Gotti uh and the people around him they they wanted stampa in there they they, they like they liked uh, angelo bruno and uh oh yeah yeah, they had no idea that bruno was going to wind up being killed but it happened (laughs) so and, and as we know, one of the most famous uh, hit pitchers ever. Yeah, uh, exactly. And yeah, he was yeah, there, yeah. you know, he and so stamp. Uh, sure. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, Castellano, you know, they weren't, uh, you know, for a long time, you know, Bruno was was uh, was liked at first, but he was also uh, greedy. And then a lot of people were upset, obviously, about the drugs, yeah. not being able yeah. to deal drugs. But then he would would collect taxes from the Greeks and that type of stuff. And so, you know, there was a lot of issues, a lot of issues there. And then, um, you know, the Gambinos and the Genovese were trying to uh, basically have control over, you know, Philly That's, back then, it's a natural especially thing. after Bruno. Yeah, especially after I, Bruno I get it. left. I get it. I, I understand that totally. Yeah. And yes, it does make sense that it does go that way. But some people had other plans for that for that area. So, uh, yeah. Now, exactly. And when Stamp and when Stamfa came into into power, I believe it was in 1991, he had John Gotti behind him. It makes you think if that indictment doesn't come down on Gotti, where does that battle go? Does it keep on happening, or does the Gambinos of New York send some men down there to help Stamfa? I think they right. Gambino. I think they get behind Joey Merlino eventually. You do. Okay. I do. I, I, just just my thoughts. You know, you got Gotti as a modern day guy at that time. You got Joey Merlino as a modern day guy at that time. You know, Stanford was like their Castellano, like you were saying. So I do think it would have worked out. The persuasion would have would have been successful with the one conversation, probably. And I think Gotti would have signed off on that happening. Just just my observation, my thought. And a lot of things happened in 94 and 95. I mean, that's when Stanford wind up getting indicted and uh, wind up getting taken off the street. 
but Merlino was in prison and he was making uh he was making pals with Ralph Natal Natalie. Yes. Right. And uh uh so he had a plan to come out and take take over as soon as he got out of prison. That was, you know, that's what Joey Merlino's thinking with Natalie at his side. Uh <coughs> remember, James? you have to remember Joey's uh, father was an underboss. Yep. <laughs> He was an underboss. He 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 had some issues. I th I don't think they shelved him. They may have notched him down a bit, but he took a forty-five. I think, if I remember correctly, a forty-five-year sentence, even after being uh, maybe taken down a notch. I don't remember. You know, I'm jogging my memory here, but I think Joey's father was taken down from underboss, maybe the soldier or something like that, and still. Stood true to the life and took a I, I I think I'm correct when I say a 45 year sentence, yeah. and died in prison. So you weren't stopping this crew. No. And then he was then there with the uh, Tura brother, uh, uh, father and son, I believe. One of them wound up going to prison, but he wanted to kill Merlino, and so did the father. Uh, Merlino actually wound up surviving that. And these, uh, this was because uh, Merlino and his crew, they beat the daylights out of uh, uh, Louis Tura. Uh, before. Uh, Louis Tura eventually went to prison and hung himself. Uh, Look at what happened to these guys. Happened, Look, yeah. Look at the VC brothers, right? We'll go with the v Billy VC. You know, it's a whole different world over there at that time. Now it's a little different, obviously. But look what one of the VC, I think v, one of the VC, John John was testifying. And Billy got shot two blocks away and anthony somebody did that and he's doing i i don't know who did it but it's 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 there somebody shot billy vc who was john john's brother john vc's brother and uh he was on the day he was going to testify i don't know who he was yes. actually testifying yes. against but i remember yes. it clearly Two, I think I, maybe I two believe, blocks from the courthouse. <laughs> they yes, him. yes, they did kill him. And you know, another thing is uh, Merlino was in, also in tight with the Pagans, the MC motorcycle gang down there, and he was also yeah. in tight with the Junior Black Mafia. So he he understood that you needed certain things on the street to keep your power. Especially, we're no longer in the '80s. You know, we're yeah. we're hitting the 2000s almost. And you, unfortunately, and as we know, drugs became a big part of the mob in the '90s and beyond. That one note, uh, one note. Merlino never convicted of a body, not one. I don't know no. what he did. He got. I don't know what he did on the street. I can't say he did or he didn't clip right, anybody right. or. Uh, but no convictions on a body. Right. Right. No it's convictions. Amazing. Yep. It's amazing. So here's this guy. He had these. 30 years in his life that absolutely insane. And now he comes to YouTube. And as we know, YouTube can kind of be insane, Tommy. Uh, Back up a minute. Think about the life that he has lived. He's not much older. I think he's 61. James, I think you said 20 something, maybe dozen, two dozen attempts on his life. Yeah. Yeah. 17 of those 61 years, I believe were incarceration. I may be wrong. I could, it, oh, give or take a few years. Yeah. You, you know, it was close though. It was that little time years. on the street, from boyhood to adulthood, he gained all of that power, all of that following, all of that support within that short amount of time. As a young fella, that's determination, and that is when I say that freight train was not stopping. Probably from when Joey was in eighth grade. Yeah. And, and, and look at the people he was around, though. You're talking, he was around, uh, he came right around Bruno. Uh, you Then you yeah. had, uh, d then you had uh, these other guys, too. You had Philip Leonetti in the street. Yes. You had uh, Scarfa. You had killers in the street. I mean, really serious guys. He came through old and new. Yeah. And is right here with us right now, releasing a video in about an hour. And you know, you, it's funny that you said that because about you know, an hour from now it's coming out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, Tommy, but but Sammy Gravano and I have become kind of tied up lately together. <laughs> and uh, uh, the funny thing about the whole thing is uh, whether you like Sammy Gravano or not, 
He's the one that survived out of all those guys. Merlino's the one that survived out of all those guys. Isn't it amazing that how – don't get me wrong. Merlino survived a whole different way than Gravano. I was going but to correct like, you. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but what I'm trying to say, though, is in all realities, these guys should be dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, because, you know, they were actually, people take for granted that the Philly mob was a very serious mob. The wars there were like nothing you've ever seen. Yeah. And you know why? And you know what makes it even more? It's a small area. It's not like five boroughs. Right. You get three bodies in a 10 block area. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's yeah. five boroughs. There's 8 million people there. So, you know what I mean? You're talking about a neighborhood. People getting clipped left and right. And and the hits were all, it was such a small area that the hits were very famous. The picture of Bruno, uh, yeah. porches getting blown up with yeah. bombs. <laughs> yeah. You know, and no back alley hits. They were right there at the diner. They were this, that, there, there, right in the right there, front and center. Matter of fact, we're going to show you another thing. Hold on. And that tells you the confidence level of the culture of the crew that they can pull that off and not worry. Right. Do not worry. They weren't worried about, about somebody else in that crew going bad about that body. Yeah, you know. Yep. And this is the only recorded hit in mob history. It happened yeah. in Philadelphia. I By recorded, I mean uh there was voice in this. And this is what makes it very interesting. 5 54 a.m. Joey Chang and waitress arrive for work. Less than four minutes later. A station wagon with mafia rival Joey Merlino and his crew drive past the restaurant. You can see the car go by the first time, then you can see the car go by and pull in. You see the three figures come out of the car and go into the luncheonette. Inside, FBI wiretaps pick up the next five seconds of audio as gunfire rings out. <laughs> you hear the gunfire from the microphone inside, you hear the waitress scream. Can you see them leave? It's the only recorded mob hit in history. Joey Chang takes five bullets, but somehow survives. Among the assassins, Joey Chang's brother and Merlino crew member, Michael Changelini. 5.54. Wait. Pretty good stuff. How did they know who, who, who was... Uh, is that... Was that come out of trial? Did somebody... Convicted of what they were just what was just said in that? Did they know who was there? They know who pulled the trigger and everything, or no? I believe they they they, they knew, but they couldn't prove it. Knowing speculative or is, conviction, speculative. I don't think there was any convictions on that. So uh, speculative. Yes, yeah. uh, they had it uh, recorded though. The the inside they had a wire, so they were able to record that. And then from the outside, you had the you had the authorities that were uh, the FBI was watching the watching the place from the outside. In fact, uh, when they heard what was happening, the FBI had called uh, local uh, authorities to come to the restaurant. Was anybody arrested for that ever or no? No, they they got away. You know, they think it was uh, Berlino and and his people. I've heard it was uh, wow. Stephen Mazzone, uh right. was was in there that did. Also, you hear that it was, um, you know, Michael Chang, his brother, that was involved. I don't know if he was there, but there was uh, three. There was three people in the car, is my understanding. Right. So my so my they real believe, question is, 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 is that's all speculation. The I'm people sorry. that were in there, that's all speculative or that's testified about the only order? person that was there was a there was a, a waitress that was there, you know, because they were just opening. So my understanding was the waitress was in there, you know, obviously, um, you know, Joey Chang was in right. there and right. I don't and and the waitress didn't see who did it. Oh, so this is just media talk saying who they think was in there. I, I don't know where no, that's there. FBI. That's FBI saying who yeah. they okay. They, they think, think it was think Joey. It. Yeah, Jerry, Joey Merlino was involved in it. No, you know, they've never said it was him that pulled the trigger or who, okay. you know, but they said that they believe that was Joey's car and that he was part of that group. It was at least his and, crew. Yeah. But never and, and nobody ever but none later, of those guys ever charged with it, correct? No. Right. But four yeah. months later, they came four months after that that uh uh 
after Joey was hit, Joey Chang was hit. Um, he got hit three times in the head. He lived, but he was paralyzed. He was never the same again. And uh, wow. they, they told him that he had to stay away. Okay. But then they went after the the brother right. and Joe was four Asian. months later. And that was one shot to the heart that just happened to kill yeah, him. Just happened. And Joey lives. But see, this yeah. is very, you know something? When I came into this uh, uh, mob genre thing, um, I, you know, I'm a novice. But when I read about, you know, when people used to talk about the Philly mob, I used to laugh. Yeah, yeah, Joe. And then when you study it and learn it, it's like, wow. I mean, Philadelphia was no joke. Don't sleep on Philly and don't sleep on Jersey. There's a lot of Jersey nope, stuff. Nope. You don't, want, you don't want to do that. And then even so then what's interesting is that, you know, um, Michael Chang's killed. Joey Merlino shot four times with bullets in the leg. And yep. then um, Mup, you know, less than a month later, um, they there's a hit that, is attempted on Stampin and his son Joseph was happened to be in the car with him and is on the highway and they yeah. uh, they ambushed him on the way to work and and he got shot in the jaw Joseph it's, yeah so you had you had these guys just going at it they were like we're going to kill you before you kill us i mean it was back and forth that yeah. was around 94 if i remember correctly yeah it was 93 that was 93. like august yeah, either early September or late August 93. And, yeah, it was a white van that had portholes that they said uh, the shots were fired from it. That's what was uh, speculated. Yeah, she, they found it later yeah. in South Philly. Right. See, I literally do no studying, guys. You catch me with this. I come off the cuff, and I don't claim to and know this study. Like no, I just, that's good. I just chat about it, and if I could you know, if I could add to it, I, I love, love to add to it. So, you know. And this was, uh, this was, um, um, you're talking about a group of 50, David and Goliath, because Stanford was like Goliath. He had 50 killers. Mm -hmm. Stanford did? Men. You know, he was, uh, Joey Merlino and the Young Turks were outnumbered greatly. Where was the Stanford crew from? They weren't neighborhood guys, were they? They were imports? No, Some no, of them were neighborhood, neighborhood. guys. Mm hmm Oh, they were the, the guys that wanted the, you, you, the old timers, the guys the that old, with Scarf yeah, the old, yeah, and Bruno. It. It, it was the old timers, and and the young guys wanted to replace them. Yeah, you weren't stopping them. No, there's no more. weren't stopping. And they and they and, made their mark even in '89, like uh, even before this war broke out. If you remember, uh, Scarfo was trying to run things from prison, and and um. Joey wasn't yeah. going to have anything to do with it. You remember it wasn't, what happened no. to his son? On, on, You're right. On, his, son on, Mark, on. his son Mark hung himself, mm -hmm. if I remember. He's hung himself. And uh, Nikki got 30 uh -huh. years. His son got 30 years. So they were gone. Yep. And and the, yep. He got shot, you remember, eight times uh, there at the Bella Vista. Yes, he he got shot Very eight times bit. and survived. He he was he another one that survived. It, it just didn't hit any of his vital vital organs. And again, no one was ever charged on that attempted murder. But then you remember Nikki Scarfo actually uh, went to the Lacases right to get him. Uh, yes, Scarfo Jr. ended up getting made with the you know with the folks in. Um, up here, you know, with New Jersey, Jersey, yeah, in right Jersey, because no one was going to let uh, Scarfo Jr. run Philly. No, nope. that wasn't going to happen. He got made with, I could say, my friends around this area. They he got made with the Jersey guys, right? Yeah, and uh, that was the only way because because Nikki made a connection. I I don't know who with in prison, mm -hmm. Lucchese boss around. I don't I don't know who he made a connection with that that said you know let's can we do this yeah. You know, Right, get this and he did it on a favor. So he got made with mm -hmm. the Lucchese on a favor. Yeah, that's exactly right. Two bosses in jail talking, or, or you know, two high level guys talking yep. in jail. Got him made over here. He didn't belong here. Mm -mm. He did not belong. Here. <clears throat> so where do you think uh, this? Uh, you, if you notice right now, um, the show's growing right now. Joy Merlino's show is growing, and it's mm -hmm. growing pretty fast. You know, they shadow banned uh, him. They shadow banned him, Lee. What's that? Who shadow banned him? They shadow banned him for one night. He, 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 who did he, that? 
How did they? Do? I, I, they told me they got shadow man. I don't know how it all works. They got paused. They hit thirteen thousand subscribers. I texted them both. You know, Snuff and Joey. I said, "Good, good growth last night." Boop, boop, boop. They're like, "We got shadow banned." He said, "We only went up to fourteen thousand." I said, "What?" Yeah, we. It stopped dead. The growth just stopped out of nowhere. Fourteen hmm. hours later, boom. Growth twenty, whatever they're at now. You know, the twenty eight thousand. I think that that video got. But they something happened. Something happened. I don't know if somebody beefed about it, complained about it. YouTube interfered. Something happened. Apparently, they were shadow banned for about. You're talking about the video, the video video itself. Yeah, the last podcast last Mm -hmm. week. Interesting. Because I congratulated them, and they're like, "No, it's not good. We're stuck." Hmm. And then I went and looked, and I said, "Wow, you are stuck. You're not moving at all." Twelve or thirteen hours later, we looked back and through the roof hmm. that's crazy well i guess that somebody complained about the video youtube looked at it and 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 decided that the complaint wasn't good right that's what it sounds like beautiful and that's how it should be because you have people right now we picked up 1100 subs in the last what three weeks uh james yep yep and it's saying in the last month 1300 so 28 days 1300 in the last month uh yeah we're averaging almost thirty thousand views every day now uh yeah over almost six hundred thousand for the month right so and and tommy stiggs they make fun of me for going out to see sammy you do what you gotta do man i don't criticize (laughs) you do what you gotta do do i think they're gonna have they're gonna have great success uh you know they're gonna they have their other paid platform that they use for the betting and all of that i don't know how all of that works i don't really follow the sports that much so that's why i could have not done this i could not have done this this is way above something i can handle way above (laughs) well the thing that that would be really good is to see uh him go at these guys that need to be going that need to be going at and uh that kind of happened when because pastiello has been running around for a long time now uh telling people that he punked Joey. And mm. at in the beginning, I didn't know much about Joey. Now that I read what I read on Joey and know what I know about Joey, I just don't see anybody punking him. I'm sorry. It's not happening. It's not, it will not happen. It did not happen. And I'm going to tell you again, you could see how cool, calm, and collected Joey was when he was talking about it. He's just mm-hmm. telling you. you. He's like, fuck him. You don't want to believe me? Don't blame him. I don't give a fuck. You don't want to believe me. That's how he told you. Know, you don't want to believe me? Don't believe me. But this is what happened. Passiello's claim, Passiello claim, uh, is, his claim to fame is basically being with hot women and being involved in a woman being shot in the face. Mm. Joey Merlino's fame is being a street boss at war, a violent war, and winning eventually and becoming the boss of the family. So you can't really even compare the two, can you? No. Passiello was not a mate guy, was he? No. No, 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 no. Now, he, he was a money maker. Money, I don't think. Huh? He's he a money a, maker. He moved, yeah. yeah. He's an earner. Okay. So mm-hmm. these guys get used because they're earners. This is things that people don't understand. A lot of guys get used because they're earners. And then eventually they're well, disposed. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> like Mikey Scar, Mikey Scar said that uh, the mob was fighting over Passiello down in Miami because they were trying mm-hmm. to figure out who was going to take, who was going to be his partner. And Passiello didn't really have any say in who was going to be his partner. Right. You know. Was he on record? Who was he? But he was on record with the Bananos, right? He's or on no. record with, uh, two, with two or three families but, d- through time. So the Bananos and then the. Uh, well, Gambinos it was Catullo and who else? And Wild Bill was fighting with Yeah, Wild Bill was fighting with Form and somebody else. Uh, and uh, it turned out that Paciello wind up uh, uh, ratting on uh, the guy that got, got yeah. him anyway. Paciello yeah. did a, a lot of ratting. He did a yeah, lot. TG, of he, TG said he was under record too with the um, Bonanno family, and so and then the the guys with the Gambinos. That's how Mikey Scars got involved, and so you know three families were fighting over him, and so he ended up choosing to go with the, um, I believe the uh, Colombo family because he that's where his friends were. It was all money, all mm-hmm. money. That's it. If you make if you make your money, they love you. They love you. Yeah. Especially right. if you know how to run clubs, especially if you have a gift of running clubs, because there's such big money in that. 
It's a tough yeah. gig. And, you know, there's guys that are used for money making. There's guys that are used for leg breaking. There's guys that are used for a lot of different things. These guys don't realize that they are being used and then could be disposed of eventually. I think there's about two or three on here that would have been disposed of eventually i'm not going to bring up all these names i don't want to get into all that stuff but well, I think eventually a few of these guys would have been disposed of yeah let me ask I, you a question um okay so you so you see his show growing uh so you don't see anybody driving him away nope he's got to stay on point do it just the way he's doing it 20 25 minute shows a little bit at a time sports is forever that's forever and a little bit of mob talk here and there, that is forever. So mm-hmm. I don't see anybody driving him away. I don't think anybody saw this coming on the rat tube side. I don't no. think anybody expected this. So they had a voice yeah. for years. How long were we around this thing? A couple of years, Lee? Three, two, three years, whatever it is. So three and a half years now. Yeah. Yeah. So there was never a voice. Only people that are, you know, of decency to combat the rats. Right. Yeah. So now yeah. there is. I, a I say the only, the only voice we had here, and even his voice is very deceptive, would be M- uh, Mikey Scars because he exposed Sammy Gravano's many, many lies uh, because they were actually together in the streets. But at the same time, he's not going to be taken as serious as a guy like Merlino because Mer- uh, Merlino is not a rat and did not testify against anybody. And that's the big difference. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of uh, how did uh, here's what I'm fascinated with. This was it was a huge breaking story where uh, where he actually announced the death of Joe Messino. Do you do you know how he found that out or how did he know about that? I don't know how he found out. That's a good question. No, it was know. interesting to me because he actually broke that. No one else had uh, knew, and then you know we started poking around just to confirm stuff, and yeah, it was true. You know, it was confirmed by the next day. But um, I just thought that was from fascinating. What I, that from what I understand, I, I, from what I heard, and I might be wrong, and if uh, Joey Merlino is watching this, he would know if I'm wrong. But I heard it was a lawyer that was involved, that a lawyer that knew people. Uh, yeah. That's what what I that's what I hear. That may not be true. But that's what so Messino, Messino was in witness protection, correct? At this time, yes, yeah, he yeah. Was. right. Yeah. So you know, through lawyers and stuff. Yeah, I'm probably. I'm going to guess it went through a lawyer to a lawyer to a lawyer to Joey. I just because mm-hmm. he was dead for a couple of days before anybody knew. The, yeah. I don't think the family wanted to go out there. They just wanted to bury him and yep. and move on. And yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. And Joey broke that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. yep. And. Uh, well, great. listen, Tommy, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to put your link, people, his link, uh, Tommy's link is going to be underneath this uh, video. Please go to his show. It's very, it's very comfortable. Grab a coffee, coffee. in the morning coffee, and yeah. Tommy will tell you his uh, good stories. <laughs> and if, and if Marino sees something in you special, Tommy, there must be something in you special. We, me and you, we've gotten along great for two and a half years. Absolutely. Never no issues. Never, never an issue. I've never had an issue yeah, on yeah. Merlino, not even one. Before we go, I want to send my condolences once again out to Joey Merlino because his mom did pass last week. Yeah. yeah. Monday was the funeral. 2,000 people at the wake. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, and where did, where did they have this in uh, Philadelphia? Yes. Okay. So that must he have been still a, a loved in South Philly, you know, yes. my understanding. So absolutely. He is. And that's it. Merlino is, is, is uh, respected on the street, even by the people. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's the difference between say him and Stanfa. Right. Uh, but uh, once again, you could say what you want about Stanfa, but he's sitting in prison and I'm sure he had the opportunity to become a rat. You hear, he took his time. Like you know, you hear these bullshit stories here and there. The one thing about him taking 4,000 off a friend of mine in Atlantic City. That did not happen like that. It didn't happen. Because if I was with my friends and we're together, look, I'm down to Gino. Spot me a Gino. It's what we do as friends. Mm-hmm. So somebody grabbed the story of Joey taking money off a friend of mine, 4,000 or something like that. It wasn't true like that. It wasn't true All like right. that. Neighborhood guys are this way, especially yeah. my generation up to right. 60, 60, between 50 and 65 years old, 
we are this way. Cause I would go next door to the bar and say to my friend, look, I need a, I need a, I need 500. Mm-hmm. It's just friends. It's not nobody. He didn't take money off. Me. Yeah. That's what I've always heard. I heard that that's why the, uh, yes. Felix Pacino, that's why he was, he got, you, he was complained, uh, you know, about, uh, supposedly Joey and, and the Turks were young Turks were, <coughs> you know, not paying their, you know, they would, um, uh, look, I don't you know, know anything about that aspect. and then not pay pay back when they lost. But, you know, I've heard that before, but, you know, I don't have any evidence that it really happened. I, that's just, you know, you hear stuff. I could just tell yeah, we've you heard a, we've, we heard that about a lot of gangsters. I yeah, could just exactly. tell you I could tell you from experience, have been, been a bookmaker in the past mm-hmm. that there's the nuts and bolts of the inside workings on a daily and weekly basis. It's insanity. Right. It's insanity. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hear these stories, but you might only hear a half of it. Maybe that guy was into them for ready for 30,000. Right. Maybe that guy hit my office for 30,000. Right. Now they hit my office for 30,000. And, you know, there's things that go back and forth. He didn't pay the whole 30,000. We made it. There's so much that goes on in a week. Yeah. Right. That nobody hears, but you may hear the negative side of a story, not mm-hmm. the whole story. Just like right. the news, right? Just like the regular news. Without a doubt. So, Tommy, thank you for being here. We're going to put your link underneath here. Thank you. And uh, we're going to put this up tomorrow, probably at noon. I'll send and, it right uh, over to them. And I'll send it right over I to them. As soon as you have the link ready, I'll send it right over to them. Okay. Well, I I appreciate. Oh, you're going to send it? I appreciate that. Absolutely. Maybe we'll put send it, it right over to them. As soon as you're ready, I'll get Maybe that we'll link. Maybe we'll put it up right tonight. Over to them. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tommy. You take care of yourself. Take care, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy. You got it. Pleasure. All right. Bye. Take care. Yeah, it was very fast. So it was nice to have Tommy on here to uh, uh, to help us out with that. Yeah. And of uh, um, people, I like to say, please subscribe to this channel if you had not. Hit the like button. The reminder bell, please, so you know when we're coming on. And uh, if you want to donate, you can. If not, if you can't, we totally understand. And uh, also, uh, please join uh, Angel Gotti's uh, My Father's Daughter. It's a Patreon. Uh, James, myself, uh, Mar- Mar- Marla Edgar, and Angel do this uh, show over there. And we are slowly growing. If you want to uh, see stuff that you wouldn't see on um, YouTube, that would be a great place to go. But thank you all. I hope you all like this. And there will be plenty of links underneath this video uh, if you want to check them out. Take care, people. You too. James, is there anything you want to say before we leave? No, no. Just uh, I really enjoyed the conversation. It was really fascinating to, you know, because he does know, uh, Tommy knows uh, Joey. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to, you know, hear hear his insights on this okay well you take care uh everybody take care and thank you so much for watching